Welcome to Insight, today produced in partnership between Alaska Public Media and M. Oppenheim TV. Today we're chatting with Jason Hodges, Executive Director of the Anchorage Concert Association, the largest performing arts presenter in Alaska. Jason has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us, and I'd like to thank you, Jason, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's talk about the Concert Association in Anchorage and talk about the footprint that you have, the impact that you have, the music that you present to the people of the region. Yeah, it's a, it's a really exciting organization to be part of. Uh, we are, as you said, the largest presenter in the state of Alaska. And so everything we do uh, comes from outside. Uh, we, we bring artists from across the country, across the world to Anchorage. We do about 30 shows a year, uh, depending on what the season is and how, how, how available the artists are. Uh, we do everything from big Broadway productions, the big touring Broadway shows that you see in New York City, to the small, you know, more intimate recital style, you know, soloists, you know, pianists, uh, those kinds of things. And then everything in between, family programming, uh, jazz. Uh, you know, we just had a, a bluegrass band that came through that did all 80s covers music. So um, we really try to bring the, the broadest array and diverse array of performers that we can find. The great thing about what we do is we have two spaces. We have a 2,000-seat hall, the Atwood Concert Hall, and a 700-seat hall, the Discovery Theater. The Atwood is the one where I really want to make sure we get it right. Um, you know, that's where I put more celebrities, you know, right. artists. And also, in a 2,000-seat hall, you know, you don't want to see it empty. <laughs> I, I mean, you want to feel like you're there with a lot of people. Um, and in many ways, that's, that's a much more challenging hall to, to book, um, you know, and as, I feel as long as we're selling 13 to 1,400 tickets in that hall, we're, we're doing fine. It feels really good. Um, the 700-seat hall is where we experiment and have fun. You know, that's where we bring an 80s bluegrass band. You know, that's where we bring a dance company that might be a little outside the, the norm. Um, you know, that's where we might bring a, a theater piece that might stretch, you know, the audiences mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, so we really try to work both sides of that, that we're constantly bringing new things um, and, and things are unexpected, but also you know, providing them with things that are familiar and, and easy to digest. So, so talk about your coming schedule. Well, w next season is going to be pretty exciting uh, for us in a number of ways. Um, you know, as we were talking about, you know, the familiar and, and, the, and the comfort food sometimes, we've got a group called the Portland Cello Project um, coming up, and um, they're, they're from Portland. And they've been here two other times before, and both times they've been here, they've played our smaller space, our 700-seat space, and they've sold out both of their shows. So they've been here twice, sold four concerts out. So we decided to put them in the bigger space, and, and they approached us this time around and said, you know, hey, we want to come back. They weren't even really on my radar. Um, but in Alaska, when we talk about spring, we don't call it spring necessarily, we call it breakup, which is a reference to the river ice breaking right. up and, and spring coming. And they'd been up here and paid enough attention and heard this term, and they decided they wanted to come up and do a breakup album. Not because the band was breaking up, but they really wanted to embrace this Alaskan notion. And they wanted to create a, an, uh, an EP, an extended play album, of about you know four to six songs. And as we got talking and riffing and, and thinking, wow, this could be really fun, you know, they wanted to work with some local artists uh, to perhaps have a songwriter write a song for the album. And they want to, you know, come up and do some scouting around in the springtime to understand and live through this breakup a little bit more. So in the one sense, while we're bringing something familiar back for a third time, we're going to be doing it in a way that is Alaskan-centric, that is really about the community. Alaska is part of the performance. Yeah, which is a new thing for us. You know, usually what we as the Concert Association do is bring stuff from outside here. Now we're bringing an outside artist to work with local artists to do something that is of Alaska, which is pretty exciting. How fun. Yeah. So what other kind of bookings have you done for the coming season? Well, uh, we were in, um, I was in Los Angeles last summer for, uh, uh, for a, for a fellowship program, leadership fellowship program I was part of. And we got to see a group called Versus Style do a little showcase in, a, in a, just a little rehearsal hall. And it was, a, they just had such an amazing story. You know, they talked a lot about, you know, where their dancers come from. You know, they're really about working in the, you know, this inner city of LA. And um, they're a hip hop dance group. So of course, you know, that's the, you know, the urban form. And you know, talking about their, their lessons and, and the weekly classes they have and how they bring their kids through the program, you know, and that if you want to be part of the company, you have to be enrolled in school. And the particular day we were there was the, I think it was like a Thursday before graduation at UCLA. So a number of these kids had come all the way through her program. We're now gonna graduate, you know, college. 
and then as these kids graduate college, they then become members of the company to help with the administration and, and performance and all that kind of stuff. And I just thought it was an incredible story. And we have such a diverse community up here in Alaska. I thought this would be a really interesting group to get up here to do some of that work in the community. Um, so they'll be here next January. Next season, we're going to be doing Billy Elliot on oh, stage. Oh, interesting. Um, which is a newer title, um, you know, won the Tony, Elton John did the music, lots of great reasons that people sh should want to come to see it. Um, but I've been talking with the director and um, again trying to figure out a way to bring a local angle. We haven't settled on this yet, we're doing the title but we're not sure if this may happen, but we're talking about working with one of the local dance companies to help provide us some extra bodies on stage as part of the dance company that, that Billy performs with. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, coming up, setting the choreography, doing some auditions with those kids, and then giving them the opportunity to be on stage with all of these actors um, from the Los Angeles area. We have Peter Pan coming up uh, in uh, late April this year, and uh, we, we've just cast two young boys to play the role of Michael um, in that production. So this will be just taking that model of you know casting one or two kids in those roles and trying to expand that into a larger contingent and, and to see what we can do. Um, again, it's, it's showcasing and shining a light on the local talent that's here as opposed to just bringing it from outside, putting it on stage, and they leave. And so we're hoping that it you know, creates some more authentic connections to the community and, and make, make people feel more connected to what's happening on that stage. So give me your dream, your, the dream project that you would love to, love to uh, wow. be able to execute. Um, you know, we just went through this exercise uh, with a group called EMC Arts from New York City. Right. Um, and it was called Incubating Innovation. And in certain ways, we're going to start trying to live this dream a little bit. Um, you know, we've we felt that we're really good at what we do. You know, when, when I started about eight years ago, the organization was really on the ropes. We were in a huge transition. And uh, in that eight-year period of time, we've gotten ourselves to a very stable and secure place. Um, and instead of, you know, I, I, get, I can get bored easily. And instead of just going, all right, we're gonna ride this out for a while or I'll go find a new job, um, we've really kind of turned to ourselves, turned to the board, and we wanna figure out how do we better serve this community. And so what we've come up with is we're gonna reach out into our community and ask the question, what matters? Just simply, what matters to you and your community? And the goal is to, to reach beyond the people that we talk to all the time, our ticket buyers and the people who always come to the hall, but really reach out into different neighborhoods and different segments of the community, find different partners who can help us reach different places to really shine a light on what matters. Then we want to take all that information, what we learn, and we want to take those stories, those issues, those ideas, those matters, and connect them with artists who will then create performance art out of those things that matter and then find a way to stage that. Art as outreach, art as being integrated into the daily lives of communities that, that very often don't experience art. Exactly. Art as transformation, art as life. Jason Hodges, thank you so much for sharing the work of the Anchorage Concert Association. Thank you so much of, uh, for describing uh, all of the performances that you um, that you present, and thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.